Chapter 1. Awakening. Izuka Midoriya was having a flashback when he was younger trying to protect a girl with pink hair and sniper scopes for eyes from his old childhood friend that has gotten worse over the years. But his thoughts were interrupted by a slight earthquake and shouting in the street next to him. Being the curious oi he is, he made his way over to the street even though he knew that he needed to go to school, if you can call it a school. He made it to the street to see that there was a hero's battle happen between an enormous villain, so he pulled out his notebook to record the fight and see what type of cork the villain has. Backdraft, a water-based hero, was helping with crowd control to keep the citizens at a safe distance, while Kamui Woods, a rising hero in the making after his debut two years ago and has been making headlines since then, was engaged in a battle with the villain. Kamui Woods, Villain, you are under arrest for illegal cork usage, vandalism of public property, and endangerment of civilian lives. Illegal cork usage has been a law for the past hundred years or so, which prevents people from using their corks in their everyday lives and, in one way, would be for self-defense in case no heroes or law enforcement was around to help them. Kamui Woods was preparing to capture the villain by using his capture move called Lacquered Chain Prison on him to attempt to stop his movements. However, a giant flew over them and drop-kicked the villain, knocking him out but also causing some property damage. The giant was revealed to be none other than Empty Lady. She's arising after debuting a year ago. Several people started photographing the heroine and her assets, while she also posed for the cameras. Izuku was fascinated by the quirk that he dubbed Gigantification, which allows the user to enlarge themselves to the height of tall buildings. Izuku was writing everything he could about the quirk, strengths, weaknesses, and applications on ways to improve on the quirk. Izuku was so lost in his notebook that he didn't hear the old man next to him ask a question about whether he was aiming to be a hero, which he was a bit embarrassed to admit he was, and the old man wished him good luck on his journey, to which Izuku happily answered he'll do his best. The reason Izuku wants to be a hero is to change society for the better and fix the laws they have on discrimination so that fewer people will suffer the life he is currently suffering. He wants to help people that are outcast in society because of their lack of a quirk, weak quirk, mutation quirk, or a villainous quirk. He wants to change society so that everyone is equal and they are not judged on their quirk status, financial status, or appearance but live equally. But he knows it's a hard task since he doesn't have the power or influence to actually make changes but he will work damn hard to achieve that goal no matter what. During the later years of his life, he has been working out so that he could keep a muscular but lean build so that he can stay fast but also pack a punch if need be. He has never fought back because he knows that he will be punished instead of the person that started the fight, so he just lets it happen. His body is covered in scars from all the beatings he receives. Izuku realized what time it was and made a mad dash to school so he wouldn't be late, but he knew he would still get punished even if he was early. After a 10-minute run, he made it to school. Aldra Jr. High, the bane of Izuku's existence, ever since he was declared corkless, he would suffer at the hands of the students and sometimes the teachers. Over the years, at each school he would go to, he would suffer because people already knew that he was corkless, and it spread like wildfire and he would suffer because of it. They would alter his grades so he wouldn't score higher than the cork students, even though he's smarter than everyone in that school smart enough to graduate with PhDs that would make most people think he had an IQ quirk, but that was all him and his big brain. Izuku would purposely get lower grades so he wouldn't get punished for being smarter than everyone because the last time he scored high, he was beaten half to death, so he keeps his intelligence hidden until he is free from this hell. He made it to class before it started, and he already knew he would get a beating for showing up late, so he made his way to his seat and sat down and kept his head down and hidden. He learned that making yourself less of a threat can keep you somewhat uninjured. Once he sat down, the teacher entered the room with a stack of papers that looked to be career papers. Teacher, all right, class, settle down. Today we have something important to discuss, and it can determine where you go in life. He lifts the papers in his hands and processes them to throw them in the air, knowing very well that Izuku would have to pick them up and hand them out to everyone else. After he went through the papers, he yelled, Teacher. Oh, who am I kidding? I know all of you want to be heroes. The class started to yell out in excitement and started showing off their different quirks, even though their quirks are mediocre at best. All of them were breaking a law of illegal quirk usage, and they weren't giving a rat's ass on whether they'd be caught or not, all except two, a white-haired boy that was writing his notebook and an ash blonde boy that had his feet up. Teacher. All right, all right, settle down. 
I warned you not to use your quirks during school hours unless you want to get in trouble. And Deku, I want you to pick up this mess you made and hand out the papers to everyone else. This is another thing that happened during the past 10 years. After Bakugo started calling him that, people started making fun of his name, and sooner than later, everyone started addressing him as Deku Midoriya instead of Izuka Midoriya. They did this to further dehumanize him and make him feel like he didn't belong in this superpowered world. Later in life, he learned to accept it but not give in to it because he knew to not fight back or the punishment would be painful. Once everyone was settled down, Izuku stood up and went to clean up the papers and hand them out. But while this was happening, the ash blonde kid stood up on his desk and said, Bakugo, yo teach them lump me up with these extras because no one can be at my level and they would be more likely to be a sidekick of some nameless D-lister. Bakugo declared, and people around him started complaining that he was being arrogant and self-centered. He's been like this ever since he got his quirk. The adults and other children would praise him for having a powerful quirk, further inflating his ego, making him more aggressive to others that are weaker than him, and he would get away with bullying anyone he wanted because the teachers would turn a blind eye to what he does. Teacher, ah, Katsuki Bakugo, the pride of Aldra, you're aiming to apply to UA High School, aren't you? The teacher stated, and people started to murmur that it was difficult to get into that school because of the low acceptance rate and how hard the entrance exam is. Bakugo, that's right, I'm the only one that even has a chance at getting into that school. I aced all my mock exams, and I'm the peck of physical training, and my quirk is far superior at that school, and when I graduate, I'll become the number one hero and become the richest, most powerful, most popular hero out there, even more famous than All Might. Bakugo declared proudly. He felt like he was him at that moment until he heard what the teacher said next. Teacher, oh yeah, Deku also wants to go to UA too. The teacher said while trying to keep his laughter in. Soon everyone's eyes were on Izuku. He felt like they would kill him right away. And then because he felt like he was in a wolf's den, Soon everyone started to laugh their asses off because Deku, the quirkless, useless disease of society, wants to be a hero. They made fun of him until they saw an explosion that hit him square in the face, and he was knocked back into the wall of the classroom. The source of the explosion was heading over to him. Bakugo, what did I tell you about applying to that school? I told you that only I, the future number one, will apply to that school and be the only one from this backwater school to graduate from there, you corkless fuck, and even if you apply, you wouldn't be allowed into the building. Izuku. But they removed that rule five years ago, and it wouldn't hurt to at least try. Izuku tried to defend himself but got an explosion to the chest in return and was grabbed harshly by the collar of his uniform by Bakugo. Before he could say anything, the teacher warned him that he might get in trouble if he continued and should wait until after school to finish what he wanted to do. Bakugo complied by shoving Izuku back into the wall and head back to his seat. Izuku picked himself up and made it back to his seat and started going over his hero journal. The school day continues as normal or as much as normal for Izuku. Elsewhere, there was a villain that took the form of a green fluid, slime-like body that was on the loose in the surrounding neighborhood causing mayhem. Crowds nearby were running for their lives or hiding from the villain. A bystander says that there is no end to the villain's rampage. But a man says in a booming voice that there is an end. Classes ended a while ago, and they were given the end-of-year assignment that they had to hand in the following week. We see Izuku packing away his belongings as fast as possible and trying to leave before they catch him. But luck was not on his side as Bakugo grabbed his hero notebook and started reading it and looked back at Izuku. Bakugo, what the fuck is this? Hero analysis for the future? You still think you can be a hero, you're corkless fuck. I keep on telling you to give it up and stop thinking you're better than me. Izuku tries to get the notebook back but gets an explosion to the face that sent him to the floor. Then he processes to explode his notebook and until it looks like it was thrown into a fire and threw the notebook out of the window and into the schoolyard. He approaches Izuku and threatens him to quit applying to UA and made his way out of the class. But before he left, he gave Izuku one of the most earth-shattering, heart-striking, nut-kicking, mind-fucking advices to have ever been said to anybody. Bakugo, you know what you could do to get a quirk. Why not go to the tallest building you can find and take a swan dive of the roof and wish you get reborn with a quirk in your next life? And if you don't get reborn, you'll be doing us all a favor by killing yourself, you corkless scum. Izuku was completely and utterly shocked and felt betrayed. Should he hear people telling him that he should kill himself, 
But he was used to it because he barely knew those people, their words would fall on his ears, but this time it's different. The person that told him to kill himself was a person he knew, a person he thought was a brother. But now he sees he's nothing but a villain in hero's clothing. Izuku watched Bakugo leave the room while laughing like the terrorist he is. He slowly got up and finished packing up his belongings and went outside to look for his notebook. Took him a while, but he found it. A koi pound being eaten by the koi in the water. He took it from the fish and looked over his notebook. It was burnt and wet but still readable. He really wanted to get home as quickly as possible but also wanted to avoid people on the way, so he went through a short he knew. On his way home, he reached an underpass. He was still thinking about what Bakugo said to him. It was stuck in his head on repeat. He failed to notice that the manhole cover was slowing being pushed aside, and out came out the slime-like villain from earlier in the day. The villain slowly started to form. He was mostly just green slime with sharp teeth and big red eyes. He towered over Izuku and silently started to approach him. Izuku suddenly felt a presence behind him and slowly turned around and looked up to see red piercing eyes looking back at him. Then the villain spoke. Villain. Hey kid. I need your help with something. Izuku was startled at first, but he slowly got the courage to answer. Izuku. What can I possibly help you with? Villain. First, I'm gonna need you to not freak out and second, I'm gonna need your body to hide in. Izuku. Wadash. Before Izuku could process what he was just asked, he got engulfed in the slime-like fluid. He felt it force open his mouth and start forcing its way into his throat. Izuku was panicking. He tried to fight it, but he was becoming weaker by the second. He started to see stars forming around the edges of his vision. He was going to die. Is this how I'm going to die? Being suffocated by a villain? I'm just going to die alone, where no one would care if I lived or died. I wonder how mom is going to take my death, Izuka thought before he lost consciousness. Villain. This is only going to take a minute, kid. It will all be over. Just before Izuku lost consciousness, he heard an all-too-familiar voice come from behind him. The voice was loud and commended authority and respect. The voice said its favorite catchphrase. Oh? Never fear cause why I am here. The villain was startled by the voice and was panicking and tried to escape. But he heard the last words of someone every single villain feared. Texas smite ash. A huge amount of wind pressure was released from the swing of the man's fist and blew apart the villain, simultaneously freeing Izuku from the villain's slimy hands. Before Izuku could fall unconscious, he saw who his savoir was. It was a big, muscled man that has gravity-defying hair and a smile filled with white, sparkling teeth. Izuku felt someone lightly smack his cheek a bunch of times, and that person kept on saying, Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up, whack. Izuku slowly opened his eyes, and what he saw will forever be burned into his brain for all of his miserable life. The person that is standing in front of him is no other than the symbol of peace, All Might, standing in front of him in all his greatness. All Might, ah, young man, you're still alive. That's good. Good job on distracting that villain for me. I followed him through the sewer system and got lost half the way, but I managed to find my way out. Izuku was too dumbstruck to say anything. Right in front of him was his idol, the second person he looked up to when it came to being a hero, a true hero that would only focus on saving people instead of looking for fame or fortune, the person he aspires to be one day. Izuku is a huge fanboy of All Might. He had all his merchandise ranging from clothes, action figures, posters, and even the limited edition stuff that is hard to come by. Izuku has to get an autograph, he had to find his notebook so he could sign it, and when he found it, it was already signed. Izuku thanked All Might heavily, and he found that he had an opportunity to ask him that question. So he worked up the courage and was about to ask when. All Might. I'm sorry, young lad, but I must be off and hand over this villain to the police so they can detain him until next. All Might was preparing to jump off when Izuku had the bright idea to jump on his leg and hold on for dear life because he still needed to ask that question. All Might launched into the air and flew at high speeds. He felt something off and looked down. He saw the face of the kid he just saved hooked onto his leg. All Might. What the heck are you doing on my leg? Get off. All Might tried to wiggle him off and make him let go and failed to notice that he wiggled the villain, 
he caught in a bottle out of his pocket and fell in an alleyway where a certain ash-blonde boy was smoking with his underlings. Izuku was struggling to keep himself on and shouted, Izuku, but if I let go, I'll die. All Might realized he was right and landed on top of a roof of a building, where he let Izuku get off and catch his breath. Izuku was on his knees, and he was pale as a ghost and panting heavily. He managed to regain his composure and stood up to face All Might but was met with a slightly pissed-off mountain of a man. All Might, what the hell are you thinking? You could have gotten yourself hurt. Izuku, I'm sorry, All Might, but I had to ask you a very important question. All Might, there's no question that has you nearly dying over. Izuku, but this one is worth dying over. Izuku mustered up all the courage he had left and started talking while looking down on the floor and not noticing the steam that's coming off All Might's body. Izuku, All Might, when I was young, I had a dream. A dream to change the world for the better for everyone to live equally. Where there is no discrimination based on a person's quirk, financial status, or social standing. I want everyone to see each other as equals, and I want to help in making that dream into reality. I wasn't born with any power or wealth, and I'm outcast because of that, but I still want to be a hero so all MIG, before Izuku could finish with his speech. There was a puff of smoke and a small, emaciated man that was all skin and bones with blonde hair and sky-blue eyes staring back at him. They just stared at each other until Izuku asked, Izuku, who are you? Where's All Might? You're looking at him, kid. This is just my civilian form, and before you say anything, this stays between us. Izuku could only nod and just look at him until he remembered why he was here. So he continued to ask that question. Izuku, All Might, is it possible to become a hero even without a quirk? Izuku shut his eyes, waiting for the words that would decide whether or not he had a purpose in life or not. But what he heard was really confusing. Izuku heard chuckling, which slowly turned full-blown laughter. Izuku opened his eyes to see the number one, the symbol of peace, All Might, laughing at him. He was confused on why he was laughing until he said words that still broke Izuku from now until the rest of his life. All Might, really kid, you want to be a corkless hero. Do you hear yourself right now? Do you really understand what you just asked me? Because if you don't, then you're just plain stupid. Let me tell you something. Heroes go day in and day out fighting villains that are stronger than most heroes, and most of the time they don't come out without suffering serious damage that could kill a person who doesn't have any power. So what makes you think you could be a hero without power to defend yourself? And others with, you don't have that power so I'm going to give you some advice. Stop dreaming big and stick to what you can do. Try being a police officer or something, just don't try to be a hero, you'll put everyone else in danger. After All Might said that he left through the rooftop exit and used the stairs to get to ground level, leaving a broken Izuku on the roof, reviewing every decision he ever made to be here and wondering where he went wrong, what did he do to deserve this, but then it hit him. He was born corkless. Izuku remembered the words Bakugo told him, and he looked over to the edge of the building and slowly walked over there, and when he reached the edge, he looked down and saw he was pretty high up, high enough to kill him on impact. Izuku started having flashbacks of his shitty life, all the pain he experienced, all the pain he caused his mother to suffer because of him. Everything came crashing down on him until he felt something, something very foreign but also felt like it was a part of him, and then it happened, a small screen appeared in front of him with the words stating, Necessary conditions fulfilled. Quirk Awakened. Advanced All for One Unlocked. Advanced All for One. Gives the user the ability to take, give, combine, copy, split, and evolve slash devolve quirks. Subfunctions of Advanced AFO. Quirk Synergy. Whenever a quirk or quirks of similar nature, they will synergize them into a new quirk. Quirk Sight. Allows the user to see the quirk or quirks inside a person and they are able to have a description of what type of quirk and how it works and what are their drawbacks. Evolve. Allows the user to evolve any quirk to its final stage of evolution. Split. Allows the user to split a quirk that has two factors that will turn into the parent quirk. Combine. Allows the user to combine quirks to create specific effects that can be helpful or harmful depending on the combination. Copy. Allows the user to permanently copy any quirk and stock it in a quirk catalog for easier use. Failsafe. This is a safety measure in case someone who has the ability to take, copy, or destroy advanced AFO will be prevented.